communication is about collaboration with interpreters and translators. The information presented here is intended to provide guidelines for school leaders and teachers related to language access for families and students who are not yet proficient in English. We hope that you find this short presentation helpful. The National Association for Educational Interpreters and Translators of Spoken Languages has written a guidebook in 2022 that we are referring to for the educational purpose of this presentation. It is called Collaborating with Spoken Language Interpreters and Translators, a primer for school leaders. Many thanks to the association for allowing the use of their document for educational purposes. You can access the complete document at the link shared on this slide. Legal responsibility for providing language access. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 states that under this act, the denial of adequate language access is a form of discrimination based on national origin. The EEOA states that the failure of an educational agency to take appropriate action to overcome barriers that impede equal participation by its students on the basis of race, color, sex, or national origin, which does include language difference in its instructional programs is considered an unlawful practice. The executive order sought to expand and ensure meaningful access for individuals not yet proficient in English who are seeking services from federal agencies and from all federally funded activities. IDEA addresses language access in education for students as well as families. Students should be tested in their native language whenever feasible and IEP should be provided in a language that families can understand. All written materials and oral communications, including at IEP meetings, must be provided in a language that parents understand in order to comply with procedural safeguards described in the Act. Maine has translated the safeguard procedure forms into several languages, and you will see a reference and link to those safeguards in a subsequent slide of this presentation. Schools must communicate information to parents, guardians who are not yet English proficient in a language they can understand about any program, service, or activity that is called to the attention of families who are English proficient. Schools should ensure that all personnel who serve as interpreters and translators have the knowledge and skills to provide the needed services. A well-meaning friend, neighbor, or community member or family member may be willing to help with interpreting services, but that does not ensure that the person understands the role of the interpreter translator or the ethics of interpreting and translating and the need to maintain confidentiality Professional translation telephone services are an option for schools when a qualified interpreter is unavailable or an interpreter is needed spontaneously rather than for a planned scheduled meeting. Districts should establish an account with a translation agency and instruct their staff on how to access interpreting services through the phone service. This is critical for all staff who may have a need to communicate with families. Be sure to include your school health service providers and the staff that participate in school registration. This fact sheet answers common questions about the rights of parents and guardians who do not speak, listen, read, or write English proficiently because it is not their primary language. The fact sheet was developed by the US uh, Department of Ed and the U.S. Department of Justice. 
Maine DOE has developed a language identification card. The language identification card should be in all locations that welcome families to a building. It provides the family a quick and easy way to indicate that they want and need interpreting services as they begin their communications with school personnel. And this link here provides you access to that card. Our notice to parents and guardians on the right to interpretation and translation services is available in 27 languages and you can access it at this link. The translated procedural safeguards and special education glossaries that have been translated can also be accessed through this link on the slide. The glossaries are useful in helping families and sometimes interpreters to understand the listed terminology. What should be translated? Well, registration and enrollment in school and school programs, grievance procedures and notices of non-discrimination, language assistant programs, parent guardian handbooks that include policies, calendars, transportation, meals, report cards, information regarding gifted and talented programs, magnet and charter schools, special education and related services, parent guardian teacher conferences, um, any requests for parent guardian permission for student participation in school activities. Remember to include an option for translation when notifying parents about school delays, snow days, or other unscheduled plans uh, for a scheduled school day. When designing a parent-student reunification plan in the case of a school emergency that required evacuation, it is important to have a plan set up for how information will be communicated to parents who require interpreting services. What steps can school leaders take to improve their language access services? First, identify families who may need language access support and the languages they speak at home. Ensure that interpreters have demonstrated competency in interpretation skills. Establish a language access plan that specifies how to provide interpreters to families who are not yet English proficient. Provide readily available training to district staff on language access requirements, and consult with your school district council for legal advice about establishing language access policies and procedures that match the needs of your school district. And lastly, the main DOE multilingual resource page has more information on language access services that we hope you will explore, providing language access to families who are not yet English proficient is a requirement of the law and an important component of strong family and school engagement. We must strive to develop language access policies and practices that are centered in inclusive schooling practices and promote these practices as an integral part piece to preserving the rights all families have to accessing the full benefits of public education we hope that you will explore the many resources on the main DOE Multilingual Learner resource page. And please feel free to contact me if you have further questions regarding interpreting and translation services.